It's March? It's March already? Are you serious? I was supposed to do this months ago. Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John and I'm in a little predicament right now because I was supposed to make this video in January or else late December and it's now March and nothing has shown up in your sub feed. Apologies. One of my favorite things to do each year is to go through and react to my Spotify wrapped. If you're not a Spotify user or maybe you've never done this before, you've never seen my videos, it's where they take your most streamed songs on the streaming platform each year and it only runs January through October 31st and then they give you a fun little analytics breakdown of your most streamed artist or maybe your most listened to song or genre, everything like that. But the biggest drawback to Spotify Wrapped is that one, they do cut off on October 31st so you don't get a taste of the entire year and two, it's been known to be a little bit buggy. Sometimes people will say, I haven't even listened to this song or maybe I only heard it once or twice and it said it was my most streamed of the entire year. They track everything just like Spotify does, your most played artist, if you're discovering new ones, your most played songs, everything like that. So if you wanna try it out, this isn't sponsored, I'll leave a link down below. And also, if you need a quick refresher on what Spotify said were my most streamed artists and songs, well, here is my top five for artists. You've got Green Day, Jimmy Eat World, Taylor Swift, The Killers, and Gorillaz. And on the song side of the fence, we've got songs from Trophy Eyes, Taylor Swift, Declan McKenna, and of course, I don't know how, Haley Williams and The Killers. But over on the most streamed artist side of the page, we have Green Day still at number one, Jimmy Eat World, Taylor Swift, The Killers, and Gorillaz. Does that, does that line up perfectly, I think, with Spotify's? Yep, that's the exact same list. What do you know, Spotify got it right. And of course, things can change in the last two months of the year, but apparently nothing changed that drastically that would have thrown off my top five. Now to see my most streamed albums of the entire year, we have The Weekend After Hours at number one as my most streamed record of the year. That surprises me, but also doesn't surprise me. That's one that I do wish Spotify would add. That's a category that is missing from their year-end rap. After Hours at number one, Fetch the Bolt Cutters at number two, Manic by Halsey, Folklore, and Brave Faces Everyone by Spanish Love Songs. All some of my favorite albums of the year, except I'm surprised at Manic. I think a lot of that has to do with individual track plays, and some of those were very high. It was only an honorable mention for me on Best Albums. And Spanish Love Songs, which was my best album of 2020. You're probably wondering, why isn't that number one? Have you listened to that album? It's like sucking every emotion into a jet engine and spitting you back out the other side. Of course I can't listen to it every day. Here's a quick refresher on my most streamed songs of the year according to Spotify. Now let's see if Last FM agrees. And they say figure eight is my most played still, but sneaking up at the very end because this track didn't really come out until like October post-human survival horror. Teardrops by Bring Me the Horizon. I thought it would go all the way to number one, but I am glad to see it at number two. It was my favorite song of last year. Then you have Simmer by Haley Williams, Leave Me Alone, and Caution. So it looks like things were just thrown off by one because of that sneaky little bad Bastard teardrops. Should we look at the full charts for these? Let's look at the full charts. Starting with artists, of course, we had Green Day with 268 Scrabbles, Jimmy Eat World with 207, Taylor Swift just behind them at 201, The Killers, Gorillaz, Radiohead almost broke the top five had I not done that underrated songs on Gorillaz. It probably would have been Radiohead. The 1975, because their album was like 29,000 songs long, so of course that racked up pretty quick. Tame Impala, The Weeknd, Fiona Apple, Linkin Park, and Deftones. I know they're going to be high for 2021. Basement is in there, and that's nice to see because they didn't put out an album last year. I just genuinely love them. Biffy Clyro, brand new. Apparently all the Bs. Blink, Basement, Biffy, Brand. 
Of course, I have to state again that I do listen to a lot of music on vinyl. I mean, that shelf back there isn't for anything. So obviously, this does not account for all of my music listening, and it obviously doesn't include the pre-release album streams that I get when an artist or team sends those to me. Any surprises that you guys are seeing? I'm not seeing any surprises. There's so many great artists in here, so many great bands that I love dearly. So yeah, there's your top 50. We're not going to react to all of the songs because we already did that full list, the playlist for Spotify or whatever, but I am curious. They don't have the album feature on Wrapped, so with After Hours at number one and us already seeing the top five reveal, Imploding the Mirage was just one play away from taking over or else tying Brave Faces by Spanish Love Songs. That is very close, and Father of All by Green Day. Man, when that dropped, I definitely listened to it several times to try and form an opinion. Sheesh, look at me trying to justify a way as to why a Green Day album is so high up on the list. It's 2021. What a weird time. Ohms by Deftones, Father of All, and Imploding the Mirage were all, like, right nipping on the heels of Brave Faces. I'm glad that that one was the fifth in the top five. It absolutely deserves it. But you got Wake Up Sunshine, Melee by Dogleg, The New Abnormal, Future Nostalgia, Sawayama, Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void. It's great to see these all up so high. A few other unexpected ones, like Science Fiction, I guess I did listen through that album a few times, RTJ4, and Trench, and Brain Pain, and Reanimator. Um, some good stuff in here. Yeah, there's the quick top 50. The next section is something that I haven't even seen with my own eyes yet. I know that there's other breakdowns that they do about your listening habits and stuff, so let's see what they have. I had 12,657 Scrabbles, which is up 9% from last year. We like to see growth, and we got 35 Scrabbles a day, which is up 13%. I listened for 32 days and 13 hours, and that's up from 28 days and 9 hours in 2019, and I only had a streak of 97 days in a row, because this past year I tried to give myself a day off at least every week, and that would generally break the streak each time. This year I listened to 934 different artists versus 741 last year, so again, I guess it's good to see that number going up. I didn't expect it to, though, because I did kind of step back. 48% uh, new artists, 64% new albums, and 75% new tracks, because we always stay discovering. One other little one at the bottom I just noticed that I thought I'd share, 153 Scrabbles was my best day ever. I set the record, it was up from 135. I don't know what I was doing that day, but I had a lot of fun apparently. Well guys, we did Spotify Wrapped versus Last FM, and we got some different results, nothing insane, but I do like that they go into more detail. Did you guys enjoy watching this? If you did, then do me a favor, drop a big old like on this video. What was your most streamed artist or song of last year? Let me know in the comments section down below, and a lot of y'all out there be shaming me for having low plays on some of these songs or artists or whatever. And I just want to remind you, you know I'm constantly listening to new stuff, it's hard to find time to go back to the other stuff too on top of the records that I already have and like to listen to. Anyways, with peace and love, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll be back soon for more on Beyond ARTV.